One thing I wanted to ask you, Mike, as we're talking about distance, though, um, where you say it's not a long drive game, but if we look throughout history in the dominant players, uh, Nicholas and Palmer and Woods and Norman and uh, going all the way up to Dustin Johnson today, they all do seem to be very long. The best of the best of the best mm -hmm. do seem to be very long. So one, since you've had so much interaction and switch sides with me, okay. uh, with Jack, I wanted to, to ask you what in Jack's mind, what is the role of the lower body? We do see a lot of people see Jack's, you know, they talk about his really muscular legs and things like that. And they say that, oh, look at all the power he's getting from his legs. But in Jack's mind, when he's actually hitting the ball, mm -hmm. what, what do you think the role of the lower body is all the way from amateur Jack till today? Well, I, I can tell you because we, I just had this conversation with him. And I asked him, I said, in, Me oh, in Mexico at your school? No, we no, we just did the memorial this last. Oh, summer. yeah. Yeah. So I asked Jack, I said, Jack, do you realize that the golf industry is focused on a couple of things. They're focused on this, this shallowing the shaft and holding this angle. Mm -hmm. And they're focused on how fast you can get your lower body to unwind. Yes. Well, when I asked him the first one, he says, it doesn't really, he says, I'm not going to use his voice. Yeah, no, that's fine. We know. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I can yeah. use it. It sounds pretty good. But. Uh, so he said, it doesn't make any sense to me. He says, if you're going to take the club back and it's going to swing back like this, so it starts on that side of my hands and then it goes on this side of my hands, that when you start down, you should immediately get the club back in that same arc. It doesn't make any sense for me to get up here and do this and then try to catch it up. He says, I've never ever tried to do that in my entire life. I always felt like I released the club from the top. Straight away. Now, what, yeah. re, what does release mean? Release did not mean unhinge your wrists. He felt like he got to the top, and when he started down, he felt like he released or directed the momentum of the club right back out in front of him, just like it went back, just like this. Yeah, so it was not just one part of it, not just this or just this or just this. It was everything. Everything. Everything was coming was from the top. Down. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what he felt. So that's when the famous quote is, I felt like I couldn't release too, too soon. Too soon. Yeah. But you got to understand, see, release, our, our industry, again, is skewed because we don't have a definition of terms. So what does release mean? Mm -hmm. In his mind, release had nothing to do with the unhinging of his wrist or the straightening of his right arm. Okay. That wasn't what he meant. Well, he didn't say that. And I asked him, well, why didn't you write that? He said, well, nobody would, would unhinge your wrist or straighten your right arm. Why would you do that? Yeah. Okay, well. Right. They're okay. doing it all over the place. Right. Yeah. But they all do it. Yeah. Okay, so he says, that's what I feel. Now on the, on the body, he says, my whole career, he says, here's what I felt. I felt like I turned back, and when I came down into the ball, I felt like my chest and my belt buckle stayed right here, and all I did was put the club head on the ball. And he says, I never had any sense or feel that I was unwinding my hips. Which, uh, now, yeah. you mm -hmm. watch him. Yeah. His hips unwind. His hips wind up. He turns more. Yeah, every slow motion analysis we see of Jack Nicholas talks about, look at it, the coil, the, the, the tr uh, tree trunk legs are going and driving this and driving that. But from a motor control aspect, that's not what he's. No, you know, he didn't yeah, feel that. He yeah. didn't try to do that. Now, Jack allowed, he let his hips turn as much as they had to turn to get the club where he needed it. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't, I mean, his hips and shoulder turn separation was minimal. And when he started down, when he started down, he felt like his chest stayed back and he moved laterally with his legs and ran the club into the ball. That's what he felt like. Yeah. Now, what did he fight his whole career? The number one thing that he disliked that he fought his whole career was when he would get off his hips, when he started down, would move up closer to the ball. Yeah. He, he hated that. He wanted to make his hips stay back. So I've seen some articles now about, well, here's a picture of Jack Nicklaus, and he was going into early extension. Well, yeah, that was one of his faults. He didn't like that. Yeah. And, and so when you look at who he was physically, very tight in his hips and his lower back, Jack mm -hmm. doesn't have a lot of flexibility rotationally in his lower back. Yeah. So he figured out a way to move to allow his body to move to get the club where he wanted it and deliver the club to the ball on the right angle of approach and he used his body for support he called it support mm -hmm. and power relative to having something to hit up against so so nicholas's idea of what the lower body should be doing is more like a like a cannon on a tripod or a supporting role rather than a power creator yeah yeah he wasn't trying to force power with his hips or his mm -hmm. legs now if we put 
EEGs or whatever all, all oh. over his body, you would see a lot of power coming from sure, there. Sure, sure you would. But from a motor control a aspect, he wasn't getting it from there. Yeah.